Hi, my name is Hanser from Team Solomid, and this is my basic champion guide to Maokai. I think Maokai is pretty decent to like you, just because he has a pretty strong laning phase. He doesn't really lose lanes super hard if you're able to play right and just play for farm. And he can be really impactful in team fights later on and just skirmishes overall. He's really good with jungle ganks too, so if you are coordinated with your jungler, you can kill the lane really easily. He plays mainly like a tank role in solo queue, so you're not going to be able to carry as hard. Especially if your team is behind, then he's not very strong. But overall, he's just a good pick. So for landing on Smaokai, you basically just want to level up as soon as possible. And so early landing phase, you want to push up the lane as much as possible. Try to hit two, then try to hit three. The more levels you have, the stronger yeah. you are because your base damage is super high. And once you get Q max to like level three, when you're level five, then you'd be pretty strong. You can out trade most opponents. After that, on your first base, you get like either Bummy Cinder or like a Spectre Scowl. That's when you become unkillable really because by then you're already really tanky and it's really hard for you to die. Your goal in laning phase is pretty much to play even, get as much farm as possible. If you can, call your jungler to gank, or you can look for roams or TPs on other lanes. Maokai's TP is probably one of the best TPs in lane in the game, so if you can get it off, it'll have a really high success rate of working out and just getting a kill. For team fights as Maokai, I think it's best if you just dive into the backline and make sure your team can follow up. You don't want to dive without your team following up, so once they do, you can like flash W onto a carry and just instant kill them. That's where he's mainly strongest. And if you can keep the fight going for a long time, it's also what makes him super good is because he gets a lot of passive rocks and just gives him all of sustain. He has laws reduced damage in team fights. And this is basically just where Maokai is at his like maximum potential as a champion. Just be able to reduce damage for his teammates, sustain a lot, CC a lot, stuff like that. I think the most underrated part about Maokai's kit is the fact that he can go invulnerable when he's casting his W. So, say someone's throwing a skill shot at you and you're about to die. If you cast a W onto a creep, you can dodge the skill shot and not get hit by it. It's like a really underused mechanic, but it's super useful at times. Other mechanics are like, if you're going for a trade, I think the most efficient trade is to E onto the champion, W onto the champion, and then Q them. It does the most damage because you get like both procs of your E and you can pretty much hit all your spells on the champion. For runes on Maokai, I like to run flat attack speed reds, armor yellows, magic says blues, and AP quints. In general, I think attack speed is better than magic pen. Just because Alka is very poor last sitting under tower, attack speed is really helpful for that. And it also allows you to proc your passive much more in team fights because you auto more or your auto goes off faster, so it's easier to proc. Maokai really doesn't scale until late game super well, so getting magic pen isn't super helpful to his damage. It just is pretty nice early game, so that's why I prefer attack speed over magic pen right now. On Maokai, I like to run 12018 on Masteries. In the Frosty Tree, I get Sorcery just because you don't really use autos for your damage, and a lot of your abilities have really good base damage. So, getting more increased ability damage is also really helpful. I choose Feast over Double Edged Sword because Feast is just super good for laning phase. Maokai is a pretty weak laning phase against like carry champions, but against tanks, he doesn't really need Double Edged Sword. He's, his role is not about doing damage, it's more about being really tanky and sticking onto carries. I get Natural Talent over Vampirism. He doesn't really have super good spells to like use Spell Vamp or Lifesteal, so getting extra damage is way more helpful in my opinion. And I get Oppressor instead of Bounty Hunter because you have a lot of CC in your kit and it helps you do more damage. 
In the resolve tree, I get recovery, tough skin, runic armor is way better at the veteran scars. The shields, healing, regeneration, everything is really good on Melkai. It procs on his passive and on nine grasps, so it's super helpful. Insights a lot better than perseverance. Being able to flash sooner onto carries and TP for flanks is way more important in my opinion than having more sustain. Uh, swiftness, I take it over legendary guardian just because Maokai, he does have gap close, but having more tenacity in team fights always better. And I choose nine grass because it has some synergy with your passive to where you can proc both at the same time, so it gives you like extra sustain, and that's why I like it. For skill around Maokai, I think it's really situational, but most of the time you want to get uh, E level 1, then if you know your jungler can gank your lane, you can get W, but most of the time you get Q just for farming, and then uh, you can get Q again or W at 3. If you get Q, it's mainly because you want to push the wave ASAP and just farm as much early game, try not to trade as much. But if you get W, you want to look for all ends and look for jungle ganks. After that, you always want to max Q first, and then W, and then E last, followed by ult whenever possible. I think this is most efficient because Sapling has like super good base damage level 1, but leveling up is not worth it compared to leveling up W. W gets like reduced cooldown, increased snare time. That's why it just does more, and it does more damage because it's just one single ability. So. It's way more important to get W max over E, and Q max first is always better than either because it just does the most damage, has low cooldown, and doesn't cost that much mana. For starting items on Maokai, the best option is Doran's Ring or Crafting Potion. Most of the time, I think Doran's Ring is just way better. You don't really need the sustain from Corrupting Potion because you already have a lot of innate sustain in your kit. Doran's Ring is really helpful because early AP early on is just strong on Maokai. And the mana regen is probably really underrated from Doran's Ring. It also actually gives a lot of mana regen, so you can spam your spells in lane if you have Doran's Ring. So for early laning phase, I think you can still build a Corrupting Potion or you can get another Doran's Ring. It's really dependent on preference or how much you base with. After those starting items, it really depends on the matchup. If you're against an AD matchup, you want to rush Sunfire. And if you're against an AP matchup, you want to rush Spirit Visage. After that, you get the other item. So if you have Spirit Visage first, you get Sunfire second. Or if you had Sunfire first, you get Spirit Visage second. From then on, you want boots. I think the best boots are Tabby, Swiftness, or Merc Treads. And you want to get Distortion Enchantment just to help your summoner cooldowns. Those are really dependent on the enemy team comp and they're like your lane matchup if you're against an auto attacker you get ninja tabby if you're against like uh, mech damage and cc you get merc treads and so these are just like a solid choice overall the following build order i think frozen hearts really good if you want an armor item you can get like a banner or just like a banshees if you need more mr usually spirit visage and merc treads is already enough mr but you can get like a different item if you want to and Usually you finish off your build with like a thorn mill. Rando and Zomans are just another good tank item. Guardian Angel is super good on Maokai because even if he dies, when he comes back to life, he can he's gonna have another passive proc, so he can just keep healing up and he has W for like invulnerability, stuff like that. Thanks for watching this basic champion guide. Make sure to check out the rest of the guides over at lowclass.com.